When we think of decibels, we usually think about sound, because when someone talks about how loud a sound is, they talk about how many decibels that sound is. But decibels are used to measure a lot of other things besides sound. But let's start by learning about how decibels are used to measure sound. Sound is vibrations in the air. And when those vibrations hit our eardrum, they cause our eardrum to vibrate and our sensory system picks that up and we hear that as sound. And our ears are sensitive to sound pressures as low as 20 micropascals. Now a pascal is one newton per square meter or 0 .000146 pounds per square inch. And a micropascal is one millionth of that. So our ears being sensitive to 20 micropascals of pressure is very, very sensitive. On the other hand, the amount of sound pressure that will cause pain, or the threshold of pain, is one trillion times that pressure. So our ears are sensitive to sounds ranging from a pressure of 21 millionths of a pascal to about 100 million pascals. This is a very wide range to deal with, and using decibels squeezes this wide range of numbers into a smaller set of numbers that are easier to deal with. So how do we do that? We start with the threshold of hearing, which is 20 micropascals, and call that zero. Now, we multiply that 20 micropascals by 10, but instead of calling that 200 micropascals, we call it 10 decibels. Easy enough. Now let's multiply that by 10. Now instead of calling it 2,000 micropascals, we call it 20 decibels. Now let's multiply that by 10 again, and instead of calling it 20,000 micropascals, we call it 30 decibels. So we multiply by 10, we simply add 10 decibels. So 20 micropascals is zero. Multiply that by 10, that's 10 decibels. Multiply it by 10 again, that's 20 decibels. Multiply that by 10 again, and that's 30 decibels. Now when we get to the threshold of pain, which is 1 trillion times 20 micropascals, instead of calling that 1 trillion something, we call it 120 decibels. Now notice we had a starting point, 20 micropascals, and then compared another sound pressure level to that. When we're dealing with decibels, we're always dealing with one level compared to another. We're always dealing with a ratio of numbers. So now when somebody says a sound is 60 decibels, we know that is 10 times 10 times 10, 6 times, times 20 micropascals, or 1 million times 20 micropascals. So far we've talked about 10 decibels, which means multiplying our sound pressure by 10. If we multiply our sound pressure by 2, we get 3 decibels. And this is pretty important because for us to hear the difference between two sound levels, there has to be a doubling in power, or 3 decibels change. So a change in 3 decibels is a doubling of power, or cutting the power in half. We can go either way. We can go up 3 decibels, which doubles the power, or go down 3 decibels, which cuts the power in half. So two important levels to know about are 3 decibels, which are a doubling, or cutting in half, a 2 to 1 ratio, or 10 decibels, which is multiplying by 10, or dividing by 10, which is a 10 to 1 ratio. In electronics, decibels are always used to measure power ratios. You might hear about voltage being measured in decibels, but this only works because there is a direct relationship between voltage and power. So decibels are always used to measure power ratios. And what you need to remember about decibels are just two things. A 2 to 1 power ratio is 3 decibels. A 10 to 1 power ratio is 10 decibels. Just about everything else you can extrapolate from that. Now there is a formula to calculate decibels, here it is, but you don't really need to use that very often. All you have to remember is a ratio of 2 to 1 is 3 decibels and a ratio of 10 to 1 is 10 decibels. And we carry that further, a ratio of 100 to 1 is 20 decibels, a ratio of 1000 to 1 is 30 decibels, and a ratio of 10,000 to 1 is 40 decibels. Do you see a pattern emerging here? If we look at the number of zeros in the ratio, it equals the first digit in the number of decibels. So 40 decibels is 1 followed by 4 zeros. So if somebody tells you that an amplifier has a gain of 3 decibels, what's that tell you? The gain is 2 to 1. So we put 1 watt in, we get 2 watts out. We put 4 watts in, we get 8 watts out. What if it's an amplifier that can handle higher wattage? We put 1000 watts in, we get 2000 watts out. Every instance there is 3 decibels. An increase of 2 to 1 is always 3 decibels. A decrease in 2 to 1. So if we have an attenuator where we put 1 watt in, get half a watt out, that's a 3 decibel loss. 
If we have another circuit where we put 10 watts in and get 5 watts out, that is a 3 decibel loss. So if we double our input, or if we cut our input in half, if we get 200% or 50% or any kind of number that comes out to a 2 to 1 ratio, that is 3 decibels if we're measuring power. Let's say we have an amplifier that has a gain of 6 dB. Well, if we add 3 dB to 3 dB, we get 6 dB. Your dB simply add together. So 3 dB plus 3 dB, that's a 2 to 1 gain, plus another 2 to 1 gain. So 3 dB is a 2 to 1 gain. 6 dB is a 4 to 1 gain. What's another 2 to 1 gain? 3 dB is 2 to 1. 6 dB is 4 to 1. So 9 dB is 8 to 1. So every time we add 3 dB, we are doubling. And every time we add 10 dB, we are multiplying by 10. So if we add 3 dB, that's doubling. 6 dB is quadrupling. 9 dB is 8 to 1. 12 dB is 16 to 1. Let's say I have an amplifier with a 16 dB gain. If I put in 1 watt, how many watts am I going to get out? Well, 10 dB is 10 to 1 and 20 dB is 100 to 1, so 16 dB is somewhere in the middle, maybe around 50 to 1. So if I put in 1 watt, I get about 50 watts out, and that's probably close enough. But it's easy to narrow down more than that. 10 dB is 10 to 1, and 6 dB is 4 to 1. So 10 times 4 is 40 to 1. So if I put in 1 watt, I get 40 watts out. Not bad, and hardly any math. We not only use decibels because it takes very large ratios and squeezes them into smaller numbers, but if we have a system that has a gain or loss at multiple stages, if we know those gains or losses in decibels, we simply add those together to get the whole system instead of having to do some complicated math to add those gains and losses together. So if we have a system that has 3 dB loss here and 6 dB loss there, that's a total of 9 dB. And then once we figure out the total loss, we can figure out what that is. 9 dB is 3 plus 3 plus 3. Each time we go 3, that's a 2 to 1 loss. So it's 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 2 to 1. So that's a 2 to 1 loss, 4 to 1, 8 to 1. So 9 dB is an 8 to 1 loss. Very easy to do the math in your head if you're using decibels. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.